Hey, this is Raheem Devon, and this is Fox Soul, our voice, our truth. For me, that means integrity, longevity, and to be legendary. Welcome they to Tracks and Tales. Yes, yes, y'all. To the beat, y'all. DJ, be easy on the ones and twos. Let you just be easy and enjoy the vibes. I go by the name of Love King of R&B. Raheem Devon. Hey, hey, hands up now. Hands up. Hands up now. Hands up. Hands up. Hey, oh, listen, hey. When I say hey. Your friends keep saying you can do better with somebody else. Hey, listen, saying I'm dangerous so that you can do bad all by yourself. Hey, 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 hey. Everybody got something to say. Oh, they don't even want to see why they talk so badly. I actually make you happy. All that matters is I say, oh, and I don't even give a damn. I'm a better man to tell them they can hate it, they can't say let them talk about hey. it. I don't care. Um, shout out to the stereotypes and Neo, you know? Um, and um, one of my previous managers, uh, Kevin Lyles, you know what I'm saying? Mike Mack. Um, that record would not have fell in my, in my lap without those guys, man. Um, yeah, and, 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 and to be completely transparent, I, I was in a period of my life at that time where I needed to be humbled and stepped outside of myself and work with, you know, new artists and work, or not necessarily new artists, but work with people outside of my circle, you know what I mean? And not trying to write everything, you know? Peace world, I'm soul and R&B legend, Raheem Duran. I was originally born in Orange, New Jersey. Um, my mother relocated to the Maryland, D.C. area. And uh, you know that's 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 the city that claims me. You know, it's a few cities that claim me where I've spent time over, you know, the course of my life. Um, I graduated from High Point High School in PG County, and I briefly attended Coppin State College in Baltimore. So I got a lot of roots in Baltimore, Baltimore City, and uh, as well, I spent a lot of time in in Philly as well. I remember um, definitely elementary school and the, the the choir teacher, music teacher taking a, taking an interest in me, like and just telling me that at a very young age that you know one on one that she thought I was like extremely gifted and I had a I had a very unique uh, voice, you know. I was uh, I was a bit of a, a recluse, you know what I mean. Like growing up, um, yeah. But I, I yeah, I, 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 that memory. I think eighty four, eighty five. 
you know, Motown 25, you know, seeing artists like Michael Jackson um, and Marvin Gaye, even Young, I just like was drawn to uh, to the artistry of what they what they do. Prince, which 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 I definitely was like way too young to probably be listening to the Prince Purple Rain album and just like going through my father's records, going through my mother's records at the time, um, you know, and just listening to what was in there, Bob Molly records, Earth, Wind & Fire, uh, Quincy Jones, you know, uh, at such a young age and just being able to just tap in and relate and, 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 and say, okay, it's, it's artists out here that are making, uh, you know, records that say save the children and records that are, I didn't know that, I didn't know, I didn't know that it was socially conscious at the time, but I knew that it was, uh, you know, music that was speaking to, to the people and speaking to the culture and for the culture of the things that I was seeing outside my window or on the news or in my neighborhood at the time. I won't say that the, the support initially was, was great. You know what I mean? I had to earn my stripes and prove that this was something that I wanted to do. I think I think anything you set out to do as a young adult, um, you know, it's your goal to make your parents proud, you know, also make yourself proud and, you know, and to do something that's legal and monetize it. You know what I mean? Um, and I think that once I started, to, once I connected the dots on figuring out how to monetize monetize it like early and you know that's where that's where I turned that corner and, and and started to get that that support okay like this is something this is a real thing he's really serious about it you know um my father already being in the music industry you know knowing knowing the uphill battles and the highs and lows of it uh as an independent artist you know I think it's just concern where you want what's best for your child, you know? All along while cultivating and shedding and, um, you know, as a songwriter and a singer, was in a few different groups. One that really took off, Urban App 31. Um, you know, that was that was really rooted and seeded from doing open mics in the U Street, D.C. area um, in the late, late 90s, early 2000s. And uh, I won a talent showcase and, and, and decided to invest in myself and get a CD burner and partnered up with a brother named Omar Retinue. We, we went on to found a group called Urban App 31 um, that was co-managed by a brother named D Chase out of Baltimore City. And, and it, the group really took off. It was kind of like a fusion of like um, Wu-Tang meets The Roots. And I was like the only singer in the, in, in the, in the, in the mix of everything. Um, but very, but but the, but the message is very potent and uh, conscious. You know what I mean. The first project I ever put out was called "The Healing," and uh, it probably was only like one love song on there. After you know, starting Urban App Thirty One um, at that same that same that same open mic spot, bar none, I met a um, producer by the name of Kev Brown and a, and an MC Cy Young who took me to DJ Jazzy Jeff. That's where that relationship started. Um, um, for some time, I was like on a payroll with Jeff as a, not only as a singer, but more so as a songwriter. And, you know, that's where I met, you know, artists like um, Eric Robeson for the first time, Jill Scott, um, a plethora of like really dope uh, producers and musicians, um, Dwelle. You know what I mean, Jeff. We called we called we called Jeff uh, Professor X, like you know what I mean, because he had like a he had an environment that was uh, I guess we call it like X Men for musicians and singers and songwriters and MCs and just uh, so many so many so many talented people. Um, he was a, he's, he's definitely been a, a connector, a wizard of connection. You know what I mean? Um, from there, I met Kenny Dope from Masters of Work, um, DJ Terry Hunter, who ended up producing you. Uh, so yeah, that's 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 kind of like a little brief down the rabbit hole of um, you know how I've been associated with so many different people.
the only option is to be, um, you know, was to be Raheem Devon, was to be successful, was to connect the dots and, and, and you know, and figure it out. I never was the artist that felt like I had to leave. In fact, I, I was the artist that was compelled to say that I'm never gonna leave, I don't have to leave. I, I, like, I, I, like I jumped off the porch musically in DC and I built, I built something from nothing. I literally went from, you know, burning my own CDs, selling them out the knapsack, jump, jumping on the green line to the red line, you know, going to U Street, uh, hitting the open mic circuits, bar none on a Monday night, warm Wednesdays in Baltimore, Black Lily in Philly, you know, hitting that circuit to, you know, slinging my tapes out the, out the North Face and the, and the Green Camry to, you know, making independent music and hitting different colleges, you know, um, on the Urban Ad 31 wave to, you know, figuring it out and touring, acquiring a job with Genuine as a background singer, you know, all the while still working on my craft and, and doing showcases, artist showcases in New York, you know, with different labels and being, count, having countless no's, you know, till we got a yes, you know, with Job Records. I mean, I went from really started from the bottom and like really made something of it, you know, and really moved how the rappers moved at the time. You know, if, it, if, it, if there's anybody probably influenced or the way I moved, I, it definitely was like at that time, it'd probably be like 50 Cent and G-Unit and, uh, and Mike Jones in particular. Like I had, I, you know, I started jacking beats because of like, you know, that whole 50 Cent, um, you know, wave, you know, and, and, and it had, it had, the, it had the next tail you could call because of Mike Jones, you know what I mean? And, 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 and that whole little wave. So yeah, you know, hip hop definitely, um, I'm, I'm heavily influenced by, you know, by the, by the culture. And, you know, I think that there's techniques that you can always, you, that you can borrow, you know, and, and, and adopt and make your, you make them your own and, you know, it make you successful and, so forth, you know. I would say what I've been able to borrow and aspire to inspire at this point as it relates to the go-go scene um, would be the performance piece and the showmanship of performance, like, you know, um, because if you go to the go-go, that's it, it, regardless of what band you're seeing, it's about showmanship and it being entertaining and the music not not stopping in the, in the crowd, not stopping the people partying and just having like a really good time, you know, putting on for their city, putting on for their corridor, you know. Um, so yeah, definitely Go-Go's been a huge influence so much that recently I started my own Go-Go band just, just, just for, you know, for, um, I wouldn't say for clout, but more so for um, the preservation of the culture, it's something that I've always um, wanted to do. And I think rather than just be cliche and just doing a record or two from the areas, like, hey, why not, why not like create a band and create an experience and a body of work and a catalog of songs that, you know, and do something that nobody's done before from my area, you know, uh, an artist of my caliber, um, you know, yeah, definitely Go-Go's had a huge influence. Um, you know, uh, I think I think um, artists like Genuine in particular that's from the area can attest to that as well, um, who I had the opportunity to, you know, tour the world with as well. You know, that was my first introduction to the industry, singing background for him um, before I got my deal with Job Records in 2002. So, you know, that, that, that it, I don't think there was an R&B singer more popping than G at the time. So, you know what I mean? That's like crash course, like R&B one-on-one, -on -one, you know? Welcome again. We live unplugged. It's your man Raheem Devon. We're gonna hit you like this right about now. The year was 2005. 
the album was called The Love Experience. Can we take you back right now? story about you is that um, the original music, the original track to you is not the original track that was released. Um, and uh, big shout out to uh, DJ Terry Hunter out of Chicago and um, DJ Wayne Williams. Um, you know, one of my, one of my other A&Rs at the label who made it happen and, and, and we had a we had, you know, we were we were like fourth quarter with two to go. And Terry Hunter came through with the T D, you know what I mean? And, and fixed and fixed the issue. So shout out to shout out to Terry, man. That record went on to be um a classic, you know what I mean? A music lover classic favorite. You know, like like I mentioned, I have um a new go go band that that, that I co founded. The Crank Crusaders back in DC, and um, Kendra, uh, you know, first lady of the band on our front line. We were we were recording some vocals last night, and before before she, before she um she we started the session, she tells me a story about, and I've often heard the story, but I didn't know she was the actual artist that was part of the story until like last night, you know. So this is like a seventeen year old like story you know legend has it so um at the time um my managers i had two managers uh jerry vines and cliff jones cliff was actually in new york shopping um shopping kendra as an artist i didn't notice until last night right like she's been holding this for months you know what i mean um yeah so so she he was actually shopping kendra's music or shopping her as an artist and um jive had just signed nivia though so the timing was off they weren't looking for a female artist and um i've often heard you know that he was he was playing records and going through records and jimmy main is i believe uh at the time was like yeah but who is that what's that right there so it's kind of like, well, I don't know what song he played or what songs he played, uh, but that led to a showcase, which happened um, in New York, which was supposed to be for, it was really intense, like, hey, we're going to go meet with, we got meeting with Job Records, they, they, they're interested in signing you, and um, 
It was supposed to be a four song showcase and I ended up performing for about an hour and a half. Yeah, we they they we pretty much made a deal on a handshake that day. Like I became, you know, a uh, job recording artist. Oh, that water like that day. So I got signed in 2002. So then I so then I had to go through the process. It was like, okay, you get signed, but then I then then once you're in the machine, you understand how the machine works and how the building works and um, the different crews in the building, seniority, um, who runs the building, who who are the priorities. Um, you know, you're hanging out in the office and you meet you 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 you. You see them. You see them bringing this kid, this bright eye and bushy tail. Just got signed to the label. His name is Chris Brown. I remember the day that they signed him, and that I met him, and to see like you know what he's become. You know, uh, so 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 I say that to say this is that yeah I did. There was a period of time from two thousand and two to two thousand and five that. Okay, all right, you, you, you're you signed, but now we got to get the music out. Now we got to convince people in the building that that uh, that you are who you know you are, or they don't know who you are, or you or you have you're so talented that you, they don't they don't understand, and you can cover so much ground. It's a lot of different shades and textures to you that they don't necessarily know what to call it. You know, is it okay? So let's just call it neo so. But it's 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 soul, it's it's rock, it's R and B, it's all these different influences. You know, if you listen to my first album, it's a lot of different vibes there. But you can you can you can you know press play and and, and let it do what it do. You know what I mean? Um, there's socially conscious records there, so that's you know that's that's ruffling feathers. That's it's not it's, it's, nobody's nobody's done that. Like how I like how I had done it at that time, you know what I mean. Um, so you know there was a lot, there was convincing that had to be done. The company was sold twice. There was mergers. It was, it was sold, and there was a merger to happen. And then they acquired new. They acquired other artists. So the roster goes from not just being, um, you know, R. Kelly and uh, Justin Timberlake. You know what I mean on two. D different ends of the spectrum. Uh, now we got out. Now there's outcasts over there. Usher, uh, Anthony Hamilton. Uh, so you know, d again, you know, there's a level of competitiveness that I that I that I, that I started to learn about as well. You know what I mean? And understanding like, okay, you got to really come with your A game and you got to do some things creatively outside of the box to ensure that, you know, um, to ensure that, 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 you know, uh, you get what you deserve out of it. You know what I mean? Let me show you what love should feel like at the midnight, baby. Well
And um, so I started doing the mixtapes. So the mixtapes was like, you know, when I started doing the mixtapes, it became like all eyes on me out, of, out there in D.C. Because when the radio reps would come to go sit down with, you know, with local radio about Usher or about um, R. Kelly or about whoever, everybody was, the, the PDs and the, and the DJs, they would talk about me. Because... I was taking whoever's beat and just jacking it. <laughs> you know what I mean? So um, it got so bad that I think I'm pretty sure I'm one of the reasons they stopped like servicing instrumentals. <laughs> you know, um, and, and 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 not for nothing. You know what I mean? If we talk about history and we talk about R&B and soul music. I'm the first, if you go and do the history on it and do the research on it, I'm the first soul and R&B singer to make mixtapes. Needless to say, got hot enough. I got hot enough in the streets doing the mixtapes that, you know, 2005, I went in my vault. I had Guess Who Loves You More, which which was, which was went on to be like, uh, you know, Love Experience, favorite, uh, and a single as well. It's a record I recorded with Kenny Dope, Cazales, and I had been holding on to the record. You know, at this point, because I didn't know like where, you know, I had seen what some of my some of my artist friends had went through, like like Dwelle with his label, and you know, seeing what Trey was going through with Atlantic, um, and I didn't know, I didn't I didn't I didn't know if I was going to stay on Jive or how that whole situation was going to pan out. You know, um, artist, I started seeing artists getting dropped. You know what I mean, and that type of thing, and. Um, so I so I put the guests who love you more like on on the on the on on the mixtape, and they were like, "Yo, this is the this that's the record, that's the record, that's the record we need to kick off with." 
and you know the powers that be were like, yo, let's 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 put out the record. So you know, in the summer of two thousand and five, June twenty eighth, we gave the world the love experience. Once again, it's Love King of R&B, Raheem Devon here, DJ Be Easy on the ones and twos. And you know what this is. You're here exclusively with us right now at Tracks Tales, courtesy of Fox Soul, y'all. Hey, listen, this next tune right here is dedicated to all the 90s music lovers. Hey, DJ Be Easy, let's hit him like this one time for the good time. Love King, Love King forever. these music lovers from lust to dawn available on all your platforms now
time with me this evening shout out to foxhole once again stream whatever you like is waiting for you all the dsps again i humbly thank you for ever keeping it soulful from the love king of r&b
our voice, our truth means to me, it means that we all have different stories and we come from different backgrounds, but they're all valid and we should be, we should be able to accept that and grow from other experiences and learn from other experiences. I'm Miles Brando and my music inspiration is Stevie Wonder just because his voice is just so angelic. I love it. Like it's just so soulful and it really inspires me to do what he does on music, on beats or whatever. And yeah, growing up in Brooklyn was very eye opening to me because I feel like my community or like people from Brooklyn are very tough and we know how to move a certain way. We got our own style and everything. And I really appreciate that I'm from Brooklyn because it's just Brooklyn. Like there's no other place like it. And we just go hard. Brooklyn, we go hard. That's facts. <laughs> Word. One Brooklyn artist that inspired me is Joey Badass. Facts. In capital C's. But you said one, so I'm gonna go with Joey Badass. I became an artist because I love music. It's been a part of my life, like, since young. I've been singing since three years old. God gave me a wonderful talent of a beautiful voice, and I want to be able to share that and uplift my community with my voice. My favorite thing about music is the process. You got to fall in love with the process, because if you don't, what are you in it for, man? Like, just figuring things out, like, starting from scratch, melodies from from melodies to hooks to verses, it's all, I love all of it. It's all part of the process and I just love it, yeah. No, I cannot get through me, I don't want to look super dumb. But I am so done with the fighting and shit, lying and shit, it ain't helping no one. If I cut my pretty penny, she gon' have to learn the hard way. If she's a dumb now, no more twenties, a fifth X, a hundred. If I cut my pretty penny, she gon' have to learn the hard way. If she's a dumb now, no more twenties. Yeah, you ain't listen. Girl, I ain't one of your friends. Hope pay attention. You thought that this never would end. Baby, your answer was end. You got it wrong, though. Your problems, I can't solve them no more. Look at me, I gotta go. You will not see me no more. Baby, I'm up to the score. Take me for granted, it's cold. Mm, no, you ain't with it. It's good riddance, oh. No, I cannot get through me, I don't wanna look super dumb But I am so done with the fighting and shit Lying and shit, it ain't helping no one If I cut my pretty penny She gon' have to learn the hard way And she's a dub now, no more twenties A fifth X, a hundred If I cut my pretty penny She gon' have to learn the hard way And she's a dub now, no more twenties My favorite era of R&B is the 90s because y'all had so many groups. The music was more about like love. Like it was just, it just, you could feel it in your soul. Like it's 90s soul R&B is just like something different. It brought something different to the table and it inspired me to do music because just, just the feeling that I got when I heard the music and like, all the different varieties of artists that were coming out at the time and bringing different sides of R&B to the table and stuff, so yeah. I'm inspired to produce because uh, one of my favorite producers alive is Kanye West, even though there's a lot of speculation around that and controversy around that, man, but I'm, se I'm separating the artist from the person and just seeing how he puts his vision together, it, it just inspires me because he just, he knows exactly what he wants 
and he gets it done. I know exactly what I want, and I want to be able to get my vision out there just like that. Just the, the fact of being able to execute that vision I have in my head, I feel like producing helps that a lot, and that's why I like producing a lot. My process of making music starts off with melodies. I always go with the melody, and I always try to make sure the production, like the beat that I use is something that I really mess with because if I don't like the beat, I can't get on it type type of thing. So make sure I make sure the production is right, like the beat is right, and then I go straight to the melodies. After that is the hook, which is the catchiest part of the song, and I try to folk put my focus towards like the hook and the melodies and stuff. Yeah. And then finish the song with the verses and yeah. Protected, nothing can mess with my pretty little thing. You don't need no suggestions, not from your best friends. I, you make me want to sing. Why you gotta do them like that? Pretty in your face, in the bottom type fat. Baby, always on track. Yeah, you run it and you know it. You the one, you ain't even gotta show that you got it. Baby, you got it. Shawty too fine like the wine is But shawty only mine, you can't dine this I call her VVS cause she's shining Never been a less little lady always grinding You gotta be the best, baby, you deserve the diamonds Never have you slept, baby, no one on your time And feeling so blessed, no church can define how beautiful your mind is Your mama probably crying Say you need, but you don't need a man You too much heat, you probably need a fan To cool you off, you killing them again No backup, you don't even got a plan I want to sit you down when you can't stand And pick you up, this one you think you can This love, no lust, I got you by the hand You ain't gotta say too much to make him understand it protected, nothing can mess with my you pretty little thing. You don't need no suggestions, not from your best friends. I, you make me want to sing. Why you gotta do them like that? Pretty in your face, in the bottom type fat. Baby, always on track. Yeah, you run it and you know it. You the one, you ain't even gotta show that. Me on top, no one's stopping her. She the finest, no one topping her. So divine, I treat her right, put a smile on her face, just a bright in the day. Wouldn't trade anything in the world for a mighty star. She the one, yeah. Like three minus two, and that three minus two. You come for my boo, watch her do what she do. Best believe she gon' get it. The money she earned, best believe she gon' spend it. No Neo, but Shardy is missing the pen. It all copper the belly with the windows tended. No one in the business, I'm in it to win it. My baby is precious. I'm glad you ain't a dream. Cause when I sleep, you next to me. And the way you make me feel, girl, you make me wanna that scream. You got it. Baby, you got it. Ultimate feature would be from Stevie Wonder. Facts. I'm trying to get on a song with Stevie Wonder or at least have him like be part of the production or something. Just have him work on a track would be crazy to me. The most difficult thing about being an artist is the consistency, like being able to get yourself to make that song or write every day or record every day. You gotta be able to push yourself and that's probably the hardest part with being an artist is being able to like finish through and follow through every single time. My main goal is to be really, to really be known as one of the greats, greatest to ever do this music thing, you know? Cause I really put my life into this and I don't see myself doing anything else but music. So I just wanna be known for being great at what I did and what I've done and just have a legacy off of that.